Alright guys, so what I've got for you today is the Canon EOS app camera. This isn't really a review, it's more of an overview of all the stuff I've been using with the Canon EOS camera over the last couple of months. I picked this up because it was extremely affordable and it's now one of the most affordable cameras in Canon's DSLR lineup. Sucks for photography, but it's pretty darn good for video work. So let's take a closer look at the EOS M body and some of the gear that I've been using with this camera. I'll post a full review on this further down the line once I've shot some more footage with it. So far, so good. All right, taking a closer look at the Canon EOS M body, you'll notice that I have some extra things on the screen. There are audio level meters up here, as well as some displays down here. Those are the telltale signs that Magic Lantern is working on this body. If you use two fingers to click, you'll notice that you get the regular Magic Lantern menus. You can scroll through these and set that up appropriately however you like. Most of the Magic Lantern features are working on the ESM body, but there are a few problems and hiccups. One of the things to note is that Canon really screwed up the USB port on here, which disables it from working with DSLR controller or with the EOS utility. Neither one of those work properly with this body, and I don't know if they ever will. Still, for the price, this thing is still a great video camera. It's dropped dramatically from about $700 down to... 200 to $250 because it sucks as a photo camera. This is not good for photography for anything that moves faster than a snail's pace because the autofocus system on this is not that great. It's pretty darn slow in fact. Still for video that doesn't really affect you so it makes it a really excellent affordable video camera for the price. Now if we flip this over you'll notice I have a quick release plate here that leaves enough room to get to the battery as well as the memory card. That's pretty handy and it doesn't interfere with anything on the camera. This is the Getzo MH652. I don't know if you pronounce it as Getzo, Geitzo, G-I-O-T-T-O-S. Anyway, it's the MH652 and that gives you enough room here on the bottom to get this onto the rig and still have access to the stuff. So if I slide this onto the rig like so here, click this down and flip this over, you can see that I can still get to the battery as well as the memory card, making it excellent for a little adapter rig to mount stuff to since this body is so small. In case you're wondering, this is just a cheap flash bracket that I picked up on eBay and it seems to work well with the EOS M body. When you pick up the EOS M, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and splurge and buy the kit lenses. Normally I wouldn't recommend the kit lenses, but these are pretty darn good for the price. The two kit lenses that Canon makes are the 18 to 55 millimeter STM lens and the 22 millimeter F2 STM lens. Both of these lenses are in the $100 range for price and they both provide pretty decent video results. Uh, they're not as, as sharp as you would expect for, say, uh, photography, but for video, they work just fine, and they're nice and petite. Besides picking up the kit lenses, you can also use really old glass with the Canon ESM body without any problems. One of the great things about the ESM is that it has a very narrow flange distance between the sensor and the lens mount, similar to the Sony NEX series cameras, which means you can mount just about any lens to this without having to use a glass adapter, making that lens perform as advertised on the ESM body. One example here is the Canon 55mm f1.2 lens. This is a beautiful piece of glass and I paid less than $300 for it on eBay. If you were using this on an EF or EFS lens, you would have a glass adapter here that would enlarge the image coming from the sensor. This reduces the amount of light into the camera and messes up the performance of the lens. I do not ever recommend using FD lenses on an EF or EFS camera. Uh, they don't look very good and they look very soft and crappy. So if you want it on a EFS lens, good luck. But for the EF, EOS M, this is a great value, and the lens performs as advertised. All you have is this cheap uh, 20 maybe $15 adapter here that locks on to the lens and attaches to the EFS body, giving you a nice 55mm f1.2 lens for your EOS M body to film with. Moving on from the Canon 55mm f1.2 lens, this is the Canon FD 35-105mm to zoom lens. 
One of the great things about this lens is the price. It was an extremely popular lens when it was around, so the price on this is very low. You can get this for under $65 on eBay, which makes it an excellent value, and it's a fixed 3.5 across the entire zoom range, which means you don't have any stopping down while you're zooming in and out with this lens. It also has some macro features if you want to take advantage of that. For a extremely reasonable price, this lens provides a ton of value, and 35 millimeters is about your 50 millimeter equivalent on the ESM body, going all the way out to 105, which really allows you to get in close on the person you're filming or the subject that you're filming. I think 105 would equate to about 160 or 170 millimeters on the ESM body, making it a pretty handy focal range overall. Moving on to more modern lenses, you're gonna to wanna to buy one of these adapters. This is an EF to EOS M adapter that allows you to attach any EF or EF lens to your EOS body. That makes it really handy if you wanna use the autofocus or any of the other features that are available on the EOS M with newer lenses. This would work great with something like, say, this Sigma 30mm f1.4 I have right here, which can be plugged directly into this and then plugged into the EOS M body. This is from Photodocs, and this is a lot more affordable than the ones that are sold by Canon. I believe this is in the $40 to $50 range, and it has a metal ring on both sides. It's built very solid, and it attaches very easily to your tripod or what have you. It's a nice thing to have, especially if you have some EFS glass laying around. Batteries for the ESM are pretty affordable. These Wasabi batteries come in two packs. I believe they're 18 or $20, and they come with a charger. Or you can get some of these really cheap generic batteries off eBay. I believe these were less than $8 a piece, and they just say lithium battery on the bottom. None of these have any problems working in the EOS body, so you shouldn't have to worry about anything when using these generic batteries as opposed to spending a ton of money on the Canon OEM batteries. These batteries won't get you through a very long shoot. One battery will probably last you less than an hour, depending on how heavily you're shooting and if you're using the image stabilization on the lens. So make sure you have plenty of these around so that you can get through an entire day of shooting. Probably wanna have five or six at least, maybe more, and a few chargers laying around so that you can rotate the other batteries through the charger as you continue on. As far as I know, there is no hand grips available yet for the EOS M body, so there's no way to extend battery life beyond the single battery that's installed in the camera. The hot shoe on the EOS M is pretty much standard, so you can use that with anything that has a normal hot shoe accessory. In this case, I have the Rode VideoMic Pro for audio, and the EOS M does in fact have a microphone input with volume control. You can also get audio level meters via the Magic Lantern installation on this body, which gives you the option to record good clean audio into the camera. Overall, I'd say the Canon EOS M is a pretty darn good buy. This has become my number one pick for people who don't have enough money to buy anything really expensive and they're working on an extremely small budget. This doesn't do very good at all for photography, so if you wanna use this on a photo shoot, I would say forget it, but if you want to use this for video, it works pretty darn well. I'll have a full write-up over at DSLR Film Noob on this, and look for the future review of the EOS M coming soon. Also, you can find links to all of the lenses that I mentioned in the overview of the kit I've been using with this in the crash bar below, along with close-ups and all that kind of stuff, and more info on each and every one of those things. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and if you like this content, you should do one of these right here. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter and subscribe to the other channel so you can watch the weekly videos that come out there along with some random stuff that I'll be posting of the behind the scenes of a lot of this stuff as I work on these videos for your pleasure. That's up in the corner, so check that out, the DSLR Film Noob channel. Even though this is the main channel, that one actually shares the real name DSLR Film Noob. So go check that out now. Words. <laughs>